Morning, Mark. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Great to see you. New badge, new colours, new club. Just talk us through the, uh, the few days that you've been at Norwich and, and how much you've enjoyed the, the challenge of taking on this uh, mammoth uh, opportunity. Yeah, obviously uh, came Wednesday for the, the press conference and then took our first training session yesterday. And I must say we've been really pleased, myself and, and Craig Shakespeare, with the, the quality of the, the facilities, first of all, and the people at the training ground and the staff. Uh, but then the players, the attitude to training yesterday was excellent and, and the quality as well. So, uh, you know, it hasn't disappointed, that's, uh, that's for sure. You talk about the quality at the, the, the club and the players in the squad. You talk about that as if you're surprised because of yeah, the, the league position suggests that things aren't going so well, but does it feel like there's, there's so much more to come from this group and that, that they're just perhaps underperforming? Yeah, I mean, the reason I'm in this seat is because obviously somebody's lost lost their, their job because the, the results weren't happening and the performances um, probably weren't getting the results that we wanted. Um, but we all know what a tough league this is, the Premier League, to go and get points in. Uh, but from what I've seen early early doors, uh, certainly on the training ground, is that the quality is there to go and get enough points. And um, the players just need to have that belief now. And I'm fortunate in, in, in the fact that there's not many managers that or head coaches that walk into a football club on their first day on the back of a win. And, uh, you know, this is what, what we've done. Uh, we beat Brentford in, the, in Daniel's last game and we have to build on that now. You've touched upon the quality in the squad there to get enough points. Does it feel like this is very much a setup that can stay in the Premier League even at this early stage? Yeah, it does, and that's what it's set up to do. Um, I think you know Stuart had, had stressed quite early that you know the first time you know Norwich came up, it was always going to be a struggle. But they've invested into the squad this season uh, on top of a you know a, a team that that cantered to win the the championship last season so we believe the quality is there um, the mentality needs to be there as well and we need to go and win football games now i hate to be negative um but norwich city have the worst defense in the premier league and the are the lowest goal scorers in english football how do you turn things around so quickly at both ends of the pitch well, it's something that we have to work on very quickly. We know there's there's uh, big problems there if we're the lowest scorers in the English Football League. So, you know, we need to go and create more chances. Uh, from what I've seen already as well, the players want to get in the areas to score goals. Um, we know how difficult it is at this level. Um, you know, especially against the Southampton team who aren't conceding many at all as well. Uh, but defensively, we need to become harder to beat. That was one of the things I stressed when I first came through the door um, you know if you keep a clean sheet you've got a point to start with so we want to start there in, in terms of be, becoming a, a team that's hard to beat but with the creative talent we've got we should be creating a lot more chances Have you had the opportunity to sit down with both your squad and individuals and sort of say right this is a clean sheet now for, for every single player I don't care if you were in the 23s last week you're in my first team this week I don't care if you're on the bench last week you've got the opportunity to to be in my first 11 is that something that perhaps the players have welcomed from you that this is a, a clean canvas for everyone yeah I think you know all players when a new head coach comes in they want to to hear what he's, he's got to say to start with so you know we had a meeting yesterday um, you know introduction for myself and Craig but also you know in preparation for, for Southampton um, told them what they can expect from me every day and you know uh you know, there was a little bit of first day itis on the training ground yesterday, as there always is from uh, you know uh, the new head coach coming in. Uh, but from what I've been told, that attitude is pretty much spot on every day. And then finally, from me, Dean, just confirm some of the team news ahead of the game with Southampton. Yeah, we've got a fully fit squad at the moment. There's only um, I, I think Zimmerman's out for for a while, and Sam Byron's uh, playing 45 minutes tonight for the under 23s. Fantastic. All the best. Thank Thanks you. So much. Cheers, Mark. Thanks, Mark. OK, Tom Williams from the BBC Police. Tom. Hi, Dean. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, that's fine, Tom. Great stuff. Uh, Dean, you've had very little contact time with the players, clearly, before your first game. Have you had enough to make any difference? Yeah, I think we can certainly make a difference. Um, I said uh, on Wednesday it's not going to be information overload, but 
you know, there's uh, obviously some some principles that I like in in my teams and some non-negotiables. Uh, you know, so we've we've gone through them yesterday. We'll do a little bit more today. Um, you know, but there won't be massive change because it's only two sessions. Tom, I think you're on uh, mute, Tom. We, Tom, we're still... Sorry, yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Cool, sorry about that, Dean. Um, those non-negotiables then, um, you know, what, what sort of small things will you rapidly introduce? And are they the things that fans might be able to identify instantly on Saturday? Yeah, well, there can be. I mean, you know, some can be set pieces, some can be throw-ins, and and what we're doing on, uh, you know, defensively from from opposition throw-ins, and uh, you know, some can be principles in how you defend your box, but also, you know, how you attack the opposition as well. So, you know, I spoke a, a lot about small details that can change games, and you know, set pieces are certainly one of them. Um, you know, and that's something we've touched on already. Being fans that are desperate for this season to kick start, they've obviously got that first win in the last match. Do you sense that desperation too? And do you sense this is a real opportunity now? Yeah, um, I wouldn't use the word desperation because you know we've got uh, 27 games left, but there's certainly uh, a will to to get better, to improve, and to go and collect the points that that we we require. We know it's been a tough start. 11 games in and five points, you know, isn't enough at this stage, but we know we can go and uh, win some games and collect them very quickly. Great. Thanks very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Tom, thank you. Okay, Vicky Sparks from PLP, please. Vicky. Morning, Dean. Good to see you. Morning, Vicky. Dean, this is a really bizarre situation where you've played a side with one club as a manager and then your immediate first next game... Uh, a new club is against the same side. I mean, I, I, that must not have happened in, in many managers' careers before. Does, does it feel strange to you? Um, yeah, slightly. I mean, what's strange for me is obviously coming into a into a new club. It's different. Um, you know, there's going to be a different environment. Um, you know, you're working with different players. But because I've been involved in professional football for such a long time, you know, there's a normality to it as well. Um, you know, the fact that we're facing... You know, Southampton, who who I faced in my last game at Aston Villa, you know, uh, probably helps me a little bit because you know I, I don't need to go and analyse them as much as as probably I would do if it was a team I hadn't played. I was going to say, obviously, different players, different team, but how much can you take? I guess from the analysis, pretty much, but also the game that you had against them with Villa into this match with Norwich. Yeah, well, obviously, we would have analysed Southampton before we played them for Aston Villa and, you know, uh, the analysis team here would have been doing some work as well. So there were certainly some crossovers in the things that I'd previously seen, you know, for Aston Villa and, and the what the analyst team had seen here. So, yeah, but it is, as you say, a different set of players that we have here to Aston Villa. So there'll be a different approach to the game as well. Is there any extra edge to it for you? No, there's no extra edge at all. I mean, it's my first game as an Orange City head coach and I want to win the game. And in terms of having it as a home match, how positive is that to have your first match at Norwich at, at Carrow Road? Yeah, I think it's really important. Um, you know, we've got really good backing from our supporters and we want to make, you know, Carrow Road a, a difficult place to come for the opposition and we can start that on Saturday. Although I'm very respectful of, of Ralph and his team, um, you know, they're in a good run of form, they're not conceding many goals uh, and they're a, they're a tough team to play against. And just finally for me, in terms of that, obviously the, the defensive record they've been building and, and even back in September, the clean sheets against Man City, West Ham, it, it seems to really click for them in games. I know you've spoken about creating more chances. Is that something that will be the key for this, for Norwich, or is it still kind of building from the back even in, from right from the start for you? I think it has to be building from the back to start with, you know, be harder to beat, uh, not give so many big chances away. Um, you know, we have got the quality within our squad to create chances. You know, it just probably hasn't happened in the first 11. That's great. Thanks, Dean. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Vicky. OK. Pear, over to you. Yes, hello, Dean. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Pear. 
Yeah, good. So, so first of all, congratulations on your new job. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, one of Norwich's best players this season has, has probably been Matthias Neumann. Uh, what do you think about his, his performances so far and, and which kind of role will he play in, in your side? Yeah, he's, uh, he's interested me, you know, uh, even before when I was watching from uh, as an Aston Villa head coach. Um, a very good footballer, um, scored a good goal like in the last game against Brentford. You know, and he's been starring for, for for his country as well. So, you know, I watched the first half of his game uh, in the week against the Netherlands, and then I watched uh, Timu against um, France. So, you know, uh, he's a very good player. Uh, he handles the ball in, in any situation, and he's got a great understanding. So he could be a really important player for us this season. From what you have seen from him in, in the Premier League, how, how far do you think he can reach? Yeah, he can go as far as he wants. I mean, he, he he appears to be a person who wants to get better, who wants to learn. Um, you know, I haven't had enough time with him yet to to, to fully, you know, um, understand his drive and, and how I can get the best out of him. But over the net, over the coming weeks and months, that that will certainly that that relationship between myself and him will grow, and hopefully, I can help him reach the top. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Thanks, Pear. Okay, Michael Bailey from The Athletic, please. Michael. Morning, Dean. Morning, Michael. Nice to see you. Um, how, uh, in terms of you've done this um, this switch before, sort of mid-season into an, into a new group, what what have you all found to be the most important thing in that in that first training session or that, that, those first meetings with the players? I think it's the the uh, information I give them in the first meeting about what they can expect from myself and my coaching staff, what I expect of them daily, um, you know, and principles, values of, of how I live my life and the behaviours I want to see at the training ground. And, uh, you know, I, I think that message is really important to get across straight away. And, um, you know, with, they're good players. That's why they're playing in the Premier League, and that's why they've, you know, uh, won the Championship at Acanta. Uh, what we have to do is go and prove that on the pitch now. Do you, um, I mean, it must be impossible for you to know every player when you arrive somewhere, even with a team in the same division. So, I mean, how do you work around that? Because I'm imagining, you know, it's a fair chunk of the squad you're maybe not really aware of. Yeah, well, it's just uh, examining them every day on the training ground. You know, watching. Uh, you know, little behaviours, what they've got, um, you know, looking at the quality, the technical abilities, um, you know, obviously over the last week or so, uh, the um, sports science team have been passing me the numbers so I can have a look at, you know, uh, their physical outputs as well. Um, so we're analysing everything all the time and looking to, to, to find out what's going to be our best team. Because I guess when it comes to pre-season, it probably, you know, people talk about getting new signings to gel with the current squad and things like that. How long do you think it sort of takes a manager or a head coach and his staff to gel with a, with a new team when they come in? Because I guess it would be a lot quicker, but I don't know what it's like as an experience. Yeah, no, it, it has to be a lot quicker because, you know, you're, you're straight into games, especially during the season. So, you know, you're looking to get results as quickly as you can. Um, you know, it's important that I get good relationships with the senior players straight away and the, the leaders of the group. And, um, you know, um, I'm quite a sociable guy. So, you know, all the players, uh, you know, in that dressing room will, will find that I will speak to them quite regular. Fantastic. When you look at the group, do you see... Um how do you see the balance between youth and experience in the group, and, and especially competing at this level, I suppose, which is obviously such a tough level? Yeah, I think there's a really good balance. I mean, you, you look, you've got the likes of Grant Hanley, uh, you, you've got uh, Kenny McLean, you've got Timu Puki, who've got lots of experience. You've got young players, Brandon Williams, who's on loan, Billy Gilmore's on loan. You've got Max Ahrens, who's come through the system here, um, you know, but... For a, relative, a relatively young player, has played an awful lot of games, so I think there's a really good blend of players here. That's great. And um, finally, have you got any memories of being at Cairo before? Obviously, it'll be very different <laughs> uh, tomorrow, but just in, in the past? 
Yeah, I mean, I've you know had some good results here before. I've had a you know a bad result as well, where I've got beat heavily at Brentford. Uh, we've Brentford, we've won with Brentford, and obviously we won in the Premier League last time with Villa, um, five goals to one. So um, you know, got some really good memories. But my abiding memory is always you know the supporters are very welcoming. Um, I want them to be welcoming to to Norwich City tomorrow, but not so much to uh, Southampton. Thank you, Dan. Good luck tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Okay, Paddy Davitt, please. Morning, Dan. How are you? Morning. Good, thank you. Thanks for your time. Um, just on the squad news that you put out there, that's, that's big for Sam Byron if he's going to play tonight. A little bit 45. I, I know you're probably focusing on the guys you've got available at the minute, but there's a guy who hasn't, I think he last kicked the ball February 2020. He's had a horrendous run with you know hamstring issues. Just up on a personal level for him, that, I, I know it's small steps, but that, that's a great first step for him. And, and you never know if, if he trains on, could be could be almost like a new player in the squad into the new year. Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, I've been made aware of obviously the injury that he's had, and he's been out an awful long time. So it's a massive step today. I spoke with the the sports science team and the medical team, and we felt it was right to give him forty five. So. You know, he was in our meeting yesterday and then we let him train with the 23s to prepare for the game tonight. So I'm looking forward to watching the game tonight. Going back to the squad, as you say, you probably only had, I don't know, by the time the kick-off tomorrow, two or three sessions to work with this group. So what are you and Craig having to focus on, you know, in these two or three sessions? What, what are the key sort of fundamentals you're trying to put across? Yeah, just the major, you know, the, the organisation, the structure, you know, the chains in, how, how, in terms of how we want to go and press, um, some patterns of... Of what we look for, uh, of what we look for in terms of how we build and create in the middle middle third of the pitch, um, you know, and, and set pieces. I think you can get easy wins with set pieces straight away because they're so important. Because you know, corners for and corners against can win or lose your games. Because of that relative lack of game time or preparation time, I'm sorry, and you talked about the are coming off the back of a win at Brentford. When you're thinking about your 11 tomorrow, are you thinking more towards continuity or are you already thinking on it? Maybe just to shake it up in one or two areas? Yeah, no, I, I believe that you don't want to change too much if the, the players have come from a, a, a win against uh, Brentford, their first win in se- of the season, and it will give them a, you know, a, a big lift. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll assess the players this morning and then decide after that. I know you asked about Campwell midweek, and Obviously, it sounds like he's a player you're aware of and maybe a player you like, but I don't think he's kicked a ball in the first team since sort of mid-September. Would it be a big ask for him to immediately come into your, your thoughts for the eleven, or is it, as you say, you'll, you'll assess it after the session today? Yeah, no, we'll assess it after the session. I mean, the big thing is that we make sure that he's fit enough first and foremost in terms of uh, his output and his numbers. Um, he appears to be so far. The attitude of all the players yesterday was fantastic and you know, I would probably expect the same again today. Uh, I know you asked about Southampton a little bit earlier, but where do you think the main threats are for them? Like the wide areas, they look pretty strong down the wide areas, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they break really quickly. They get good numbers in the in in your penalty box. You know, there can be five or six of the opposition in your penalty box at once. Um, high energetic team. They will they will press you well as well. Um, you know, and our job is to go and play in their half. Um, you know, go and try and control the game. Uh, but it will be difficult to do because they're a good team. Four and one. And again, you've already touched on the fans, and, and I, you know they'll come and support their team anyway. But do you need also maybe just to get across that? You know, this this isn't going to be a quick fix. You can't suddenly come in and wave wave a magic wand, you and shaky, and and then everything's all good in the garden. Do they just need to buy into that little bit? And this is a process, and it might take a little bit of time. Yeah, they, I think they're fully aware of that. The, I think the support that they were giving the team anyway, despite the start to the season, was there. Uh, that's all. That that's been for all to see. Um, we need them to get behind us because there's only one way that we're going to go and win football games, and that's all together. And that's the supporters, the staff. Um, the, the ownership um, which have been very welcoming to me myself and Shaky, you know right from the off but the players as well we all need to, to pull together and uh, and the togetherness that we can show can be be our unity and our driving force cheers mate good luck tomorrow thanks for your time thank you cheers Paddy Charlie hey Dean alright hey Charlie um, just, just are you one of these managers do you look at mini runs and set targets because from the outside looking at these next three games you know ideally you probably do need six points do you look at it like that and how do you sort of look at these next 
really important three matches? Uh, I've looked no further than Southampton, to be honest. Uh, you know, I've left the, the the following week's games to the analysts so far. Um, you know, we've had such a short period to build into this game, uh, but it is a team that I know a lot about. So, for me, it's just one game at a time at the moment. You know, we've got three points to play for each time. Let's go all out and try and get them. And in terms of scoring goals, uh, obviously, you, you, you know, you, 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 you've been asked about the attacking strength of Gilmore and Cantwell but in terms of Tamu Puki, how important is it that you really got to get the, the best out of him because in the Premier League two years ago he, he scored nine goals in that first half of the season then the service dried up and he didn't obviously he only scored a couple more this season he's got three but how important is it to really get the best out of him because he does have an unbelievable record for Norwich yeah it's really important you know he's a proven goal scorer not just in the Premier League you know uh, internationally and you know, in the, in the championship as well. Um, but I don't want us to be over reliant on one person to score the goals. Uh, goals have to come from you know other areas of the pitch. We all have to chip in. Yes, we've got to be better at creating chances for him. Um, we've got to feed him, um, and we've got the players to do that as well. Uh, we just need to our pr productivity certainly has to be better. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Tony. Hi Dean. Hi Tony. Uh, I just wanted, I think you mentioned this the other day when you took over at Walsall in 2011 and I think you were nine points adrift weren't you at the bottom of the of League One and, and I wonder when you take over in a situation like that is the first thing you have to do to kind of get the, I mean you believe you can sort it but is the first thing to do is to get in the players heads and, and make them believe that they can do it. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it's that that word belief. You know, uh, and as I said earlier, again, what's been helpful for me is the fact that we've won the last game. Um, that should give the players some belief as well. Um, you know, hopefully we get that new head coach bounce, whatever or so whatever it's called. Um, you know, but from what I've seen on the training ground, I've been happy, and uh, we just need to replicate that in games now. No, I haven't. No. I mean, you're, you, you are, you know. I know. I know you can be bullish as you like about this, but when you take over a team at the bottom of the league, you are putting your reputation on the line a little bit, aren't you? Um, you know, I, I leave that for others to judge whether I'm putting it on the line. Um, for me, it was a, uh, you know, um, it was a good decision to make. It was, you know, I was offered the opportunity, and I'm looking forward to it because I looked at the squad of players first and foremost. I looked at the people I was going to work with, Stuart and Neil, and you know I liked what I saw. So you know, people will call it a risk. I call it a challenge, and I'm looking forward to it. Brilliant. Thanks. Good luck, Dean. Thank you. This meeting is being recorded. And finally, uh, Rob Butler, BBC Radio Norfolk. Rob. Hello, Dean. Hi, Rob. Great to see you. Um, just going back to the, what you said about first day itis, if you could just expand on that. I, I guess you meant that all the players were kind of really up for it and trying to impress you and Craig and what have you. Yeah, you just expect that, you know, uh, that level of adrenaline to be a little bit higher um, because, as I said, when I come in, everybody starts from afresh now. It's, in a, it's uh, two pairs of, of fresh eyes looking at the, the squad and the players and, you know, People who probably haven't been playing can now sense a, an opportunity to to try and get in, into the team. So, um, yeah, they've really set a really good first impression on myself and Craig. And that, that's important, isn't it? Because you want to keep that going. And I guess you can refer back to, to in a couple of weeks and say, look, you remember what you were like on the first day, lads? We want that every day. Yeah, um, you know, just meeting the staff that you know are, are already here um you know they've told me already that it's a strong dressing room you know there there's a, a lot of unity within that dressing room there's a a lot of competition for places um and that's what you want as a as a head coach because you you want a competitive team to to choose from one thing we need is a, a real strong spine through the middle of the uh, of the team and if we can build that and uh, build confidence then you know who knows what can happen 
you talked about belief, uh, and obviously that's something that perhaps is easy to say Norwich have lacked because they have lost a lot of games this season so far, but they did win that game against Brentford. Are you a manager that really thinks hard about what you're going to say in team talks just before kick-off, or do you just kind of go, go with the flow, or, or how does it work for you? Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I haven't got my dog with me here. I'm normally taking him for a walk and having a little think, so I'll, I'll have to have a little wonder on my own. But, um, yeah, you... Mess- the message that you get to the players, I think, can be really important. Um, you know, there's, you know, much better and more successful managers than myself who have used that period to to get a, an important message across. The likes of Sir Alex Ferguson and Mourinho, people like that. So, you know, it's really important that message, that, the final message they get before they go out. Uh, and Southampton, the game tomorrow, team, you know well, we've, we've spoken a lot about that. Is, is Southampton the kind of club that Norwich should be targeting to emulate? Because they're fairly comfortable in mid-table, you know, a similar size club to Norwich. And that's kind of a target for, for Norwich to say that we can we can do this. We, you know, we haven't perhaps got the money they've got, but we can, uh, uh, you know, try to get the results they get. Yeah, I mean, I always say that that first season when you've been promoted is the hardest season. Um you know, if you, you survival has got to be the aim for all the clubs that, that get promoted, and then once you survive, you can build, um, and that's our that's our, our job this season. Now, Southampton did that, and you can see the, how they've built and, and become, you know, a sustained Premier League team. Uh, um, lots of pictures were put out by the club yesterday of you on the training ground. You know, lots of smiles on faces and what have you. We saw Neil Ad- Adams out there as well, someone you know well already because he's been with you these last few days. He's obviously a former manager at Norwich City, played for the club as well, been, been with the club a long time. No doubt very useful to have him around. Yeah, it is, uh, you know, um, picking his brains on what he's seen. Uh, you know, all the staff around here at the moment, they've seen the players a lot more than I have. So it's really important that we can get some information from them on what they've seen so far. Um, and then my job is then to, to digest it all and, uh, you know, make the decision that I feel will will put the best team out uh, to to get a, a result on Saturday.